By being more flexible than standard ET tubes, armored tubes are less likely to kink and occlude when bent to an angle, which is their biggest single advantage over standard ET tubes. Just like standard ET tubes, armored or reinforced tubes have the typical left-facing bevel at the tip and the Murphy eye. Their distincting feature is a metal wire coil embedded in the wall of the tube shaft, which keeps the lumen of the tube open when it is bent. The fact that this type of ET tube contains a metal wire coil means there is no need for a radio opaque line. In contrast to standard ET tubes, the tube connector of armor tube is firmly fixed to the tube shaft and not detachable. The fact that armor tubes are bendier and therefore not as well preformed as standard tubes means they are more likely to require a stylet for successful intubation since they don't keep their curve shape quite as well. Although armor tubes are less likely to occlude through bending because of the wire coil reinforcement, they are not a substitute for a bite block. While it is significantly more difficult for a patient to totally occlude an armored tube compared to a regular tube by biting onto it, the armored tube has the disadvantage of having a memory meaning it won't expand back to a round diameter once the bite is released, significantly increasing resistance to airflow. For medical equipment, there are three levels of MRI compatibility and safety. The first is known as MRI safe. Equipment that does not contain any metal parts are known as MRI safe. With regards to endotracheal tubes, this would apply to uncuff ED tubes. The second is MRI conditional. Equipment which has some metal parts such as the stainless steel spring in the pilot balloon valve. And then the third is MRI unsafe. Equipment that must not be used in an MRI environment. With regards to MRI safety, Armored endotracheal tubes are classified as MRI conditional, which means they are generally safe to use in an MRI environment. Actually, most endotracheal tubes are only classified as MRI conditional and not MRI safe because of the pilot balloon, which usually contains a metal spring loaded valve. For any medical equipment to be MRI safe, it must not contain any metal at all. It might still be worth to avoid using armored tubes in the MRI environment as the metal coil can adversely affect picture quality, especially if the scanned area is in the close vicinity to the tube that is in the cervical spine and the brain MRIs. Reinforced tubes have certain advantages over standard endotracheal tubes in several situations due to their resistance to occlusion when bent and their overall greater flexibility. The most common reason to use armored ETT is arguably for certain head and neck and neurosurgical cases, that is when access to the airway is limited and bulky equipment in front of the patient's mouth and face can get in the way of the surgeon. In these situations, an armored tube is a great alternative to an oral RAE tube. Second, they can be advantageous in fiber optic intubation via either the oral or nasal route since they are usually easier to railroad off the scope due to their superior flexibility. The third, they might be useful for intubation through a tracheotomy. Again, the greater flexibility of these tubes makes for an easier navigation of the angle between the tracheostomy site at the skin and the trachea and makes an armored ET tube potentially less traumatic than a standard one. Lastly, reinforced tubes can be useful in patients' position,
prone. Force is applied at to the part of the tube outside of the patient's airway are less likely to be transmitted. There are some disadvantages to using an armored or reinforced tubes, such as misting of the ET tube. One of the confirmatory signs of successful tracheal intubation is more difficult to see when an armored or reinforced tube is used because of the wire coil and overall higher opacity of the tube wall. The fact that the connector at the proximal end is fixed and cannot be detached means armored or reinforced ED tubes cannot be used with the air Q supracrotic airway or for intubation through an operating laryngoscope. They might not be suitable for airway management in the MRI scanner and they are more expensive.